Welcome back. This is Dr. Glenn. And we're talking about vision, developing your peripheral vision. We've talked about not only the front vision, but the back space behind you that you can see in your mind's eye. And that is the inner vision, the visualization. And now we're at uh, level six here. We're specifically getting into the heart of that, of having not only a plan, but a map. When we have a map, the map is not the same as the territory, right? The peripheral vision, when you're seeing the world, the goal is to see it fully, to see the actual terrain that's there because it may differ from how it was last time. And being able to see that could be life-saving, could make all the difference. At the same time, it's really, really helpful in the long run to have a map. And that would be your memory of what was there before. Without both, without the two, it's like without having two eyes, we don't have stereoscopic depth perception. And they've got to coordinate. They've got to be simultaneous for that to work. Same with having the peripheral vision coming in, with being able to gain meaning from it, and, and, and think through a plan, and acting on that plan sequentially, with intention, but also maintaining awareness. So we have awareness of any feedback, any difference between the plan and the reality. It's like, well, I, I thought this would happen, but actually it looks like we're going off. What If you're going to the moon, how soon is it a good idea to notice if you're off course? Right? The sooner you notice, the smaller the correction is. If you're not aware, if you don't have a map, it's like, well, we're going toward the moon. How come it's kind of going over to the side there? Oops. <laughs> but if we have the map and we can kind of measure, get a, gauge the map against what we're seeing out the window, we can say, okay, we're off by a degree and a half, course correction, good, we're on target. We want to be able to maintain being on target. What if, what if an unforeseen obstacle comes in the path? Oh, how do we get there now? We have to navigate around it. It's a lot easier on us than trying to plow through it. You know, some of us are built to plow through things and, you know, easier than others. And unfortunately, those who are, you know, strong as a, an ox or a bull or strong as a horse often will be those of us who wind up falling over dead at 40 to 50 years old with a heart attack or a stroke having no warning. We don't get those warnings if we're really robust and strong physically. So if you're more sensitive, and mo most of you taking this course will be more on the sensitive type, uh, it's a grace. Be grateful, be in gratitude. You're learning, you're having to learn to navigate these things. You can't force your way through, and you shouldn't. You don't need to. You have the ability to develop the visual awareness internally to have a map of what may happen and even think through potential alternative actions, reactions. It's like safe driving. A good driver already can tell you if a certain thing might happen. If somebody pulls out right in front of you, what are you going to do? You don't want to have to think it through at the time. Thinking is slow. It's linear. We need spatial processing, visual processing, which is much quicker. It's parallel processing. We need to have all the possibilities laid out so we can actually have a reflex response that's our, our survival mechanism. Uh, it, it keeps us alive. So uh, we're developing the ability to visualize, to see with the mind's eye. Now, just in the past week, uh, new research uh, came to my awareness, very recent research, that a human subject in a dark room, no light from the environment, visualizing a light, we could measure light coming from the visual cortex, the brain. So the human being visualizing is actually a light function, which you know, we can only measure a tiny bit, but we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of light. Well, most of it stays within, within us. It's not measurable on the outside to an instrument. There's a little bit of leakage, and that's what they can measure. But that's dark energy in, in our model. Uh, so the dark energy of consciousness within your self sphere especially this consciousness sphere of the in the cranium in the head is uh, 
is, is where you're mapping, where you're visualizing, where you're seeing the whole world. You can see, you can see real space, you can see virtual space, you can imagine space behind you, you can uh, visualize new combinations, new potential things, you can we have dream space similar. It's a, it's a future space, a visualization space where you can recombine potential images that you have not seen together before. And those are, are, are very real images. You can see them, you can remember them. Uh, it, it's another area of vision to, to bring some attention and awareness to, to develop. Uh, write down your dreams, dream journaling, dream interpretation, looking at not, not needing the meaning, not, not forcing it, focusing on it in, in a hard way, but, but bringing meaning to your life through it by, for example, uh, like the Sinoi tribe, would, would you have a, an important dream and you know when it's important, you can feel that, you would create something into the world from the dream world. It's that inner world of our creativity, okay? So uh, play with that, and, and please do give me feedback on, on what you're learning, what's working, what, what you would like more of. Uh, <clears throat> and, and we'll talk more next time where we're going to transcend the self even further. We've got that map. Now we're going to actually relate to what's out there in the real world. Three more levels. It's great. See you next time. Mm -hmm.